Oh, I'm just gonna. Re so here we are at Hamfest 2018. DJ Short. Why should people acknowledge and appreciate uh, hashish or the old school style? You're all in this bubble and rosin, but what about the the charis, the hand rub? Why is it important to keep those traditional formats alive? If you could sample some real traditional Nepalese temple balls, oh. that would answer the question entirely. You know, are there words for that? Um, but if you grew up on bubble hash and rosin, why should you settle for that old school stuff? Right, right, right. And if you grew up on Everclear, you will never appreciate a fine glass of Merlot, will you? Let alone an aged single malt. <laughs> there you go. So it's, it's quality over quantity, right? And I think a lot of people, the, the potency is Quantity, Paramount, yes. Right, and and quality is what matters. When you finally get that fine glass of Merlot, you like it. You know, your body knows. And, you know, there, there is no other way other than Nepal, Afghanistan, and Morocco, Morocco uh, Lebanon. Lebanon, Kashmir, um, and, and a few various other places, Africa, where the exactly. traditional hash is still being made in a traditional way. These people have been doing this for thousands of years. For a reason. Yes, and they, that specific reason gets amplified every year uh, by selecting the best and rejecting the others and, and going forward. Um, the traditional hash, um, realistically, from sativa now, uh, tropical regions produce hand rub charis hash, whereas the glandular stalk trichome in my opinion was bred strictly for hash production uh, sieve method morocco afghanistan dry Lebanon. Sieve, right right um but again these people have been at it for a long time they know what they're doing the flavors that are in there the experiences that are in there are by far more broad and encompassing than what we are accustomed to so uh, you are truly OG. People flatter me by pretending I am. I do a class I teach, land races and cannabis cultural anthropology. So things like majun and bong and hashish techniques are part of this I'm trying to at least expose consumers to because they probably aren't going to find these products in their dispensaries. Correct. Uh, at this point, you can go to Amsterdam, you can go to Christiania and find some of these things in there. Mind you, as with everything, commercial grade is the bulk of the market. Yes. And, you know, your mileage may vary. But as far as the quality products, you search them out, you find them, you sample them, you let your body decide. And when you do have the opportunity, the, the, the finest smoke I've ever smoked is an Epilese Temple Ball, followed closely by... Um, Hand rolled charis. charis. yes. Oh, yeah. Or the um, red Lebanese when done well. And the effect that that caused for me was by far and away a more quality experience than what I am experiencing with even the purity of some of these concentrates that we're doing now. Um, I appreciate the concentrates we're doing now. We're getting closer. Um, it's also by um, very specifically um, isolating various constituents, we are beginning to parse out what effect these different things have. Up to this point in time, we've been mainly concerned with these major spikes on the chemical testing, the THC, the CBD, but there are other things involved, other cannabinoids, other terpenes that are smaller right. little things, but it's the ratio of these smaller things. Parsing that out is going to take a lot of time. In my opinion, the cannabis plant is going to play the same role that the telescope did in Galileo's day in opening up our understanding of, in my opinion, it will be nonlinear dynamic. Very fine, subtle um, ratios and effects that they have. And, and parsing that out, we got our work cut out for us. Again, though, and as, tr as far as authority goes in terms of how these uh, things affect us, these people from these areas, especially the elders, right. oh, yeah. who have inherited this, this knowledge, um, know things that we don't. And it is apparent in their products. So if you get the opportunity, Amsterdam, um, you know, there's a lot of Moroccan hash floating around Spain and Europe. Right, right. Uh, varying degrees of quality, but you can then start to see the terroir that that, that the region, expression exactly uh, the phenotypic expressions that those environments not to mention the workflow 
um, from uh, the, the, the golden you see in Lebanon and the red you see in uh, you know other yes. parts. And hopefully, you know, these people will maintain their genetic stock. Uh, Unfortunately, yeah. what happens in the commercial world is they get wind of what our market wants, which in their mind for the last while has been hybrids. From Amsterdam often. Yes, and, and you see this, it's very apparent in Jamaica, where when you see the fields in Jamaica now, the mountainsides are these little scrub plants, whereas they used to be these... Tall sativas. sativas. Now the sativas are still there. They just don't have the commercial Potential, right. ...that these other things have at this particular time. But I think that once the market has an opportunity to sample these things, they will come to appreciate the terroir of these areas and the methods that these people have for mantic. Well, I have put Colombian Gold 72 into 502 and elsewhere. We will, next time we see each other, we'll have to have a sativa hash because I've made it before. And you, you expect an, an indica-like experience from the form, but when you make it with a sativa, yep. it's a whole other expression. Yes, it is, absolutely. And another you know, little thing to look forward to in the future here is South America. Uh, when Uruguay passed their law and the other countries that are legalizing down there are kind of following suit, in their law is um, opportunity to export. So at some point uh, in time, you know, Santa Marta, Colombia, yes. things in Peru, um, I, I think will come it, to the fore. Come yes. to the fore. Yes. Well, thank you, sir. You're welcome. And uh, welcome. next time we see each other, as always, I'll make sure to have a pocket full of hash. Yes, thank you, Jerry. I do enjoy the hash that I that I get from you. And I enjoy sharing it with you. Thanks, Excellent. buddy. You bet. Thank you.